Okay, good afternoon, uh, everybody um, who's here in Kyoto, and welcome to those who are joining online. Um, this is a, an open meeting on the um, uh, UN Group on Information Society, so, um, and we'll get into the agenda in just a second, but um, basically the, this meeting is to really look at the, the UN side of things on how we're supporting the overall process related to the uh, World Summit for Information Society, um, and to get some ideas uh, from you on a number of different things, including um, what you would like to see happen at the next WISIS forum that will happen uh, in the spring, May, right? Exactly. In, in May 2024. Um, my name is Robert Opp. I'm the Chief Digital Officer for the United Nations Development Program. Um, it's my honor to uh, chair the UNGUS group this year together with our colleagues from ITU. Um, and I have Gitanjali here beside me, and we'll, she'll speak in just a second. Um, but I would actually think it, it might be good if we can do just a very quick round of introductions. Um, we know we've got UN agencies represented here, but we've also got some other stakeholders, which is great. Um, so it'd be good to know just uh, where you're coming from in terms of organization. Um, so, I mean, Denise, we, we, could, we could start with you, and maybe we can pass the mic around a bit. Thank you, Robert. Uh, my name is Denis Susar from UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, uh, UNDESA, which is a member of United Nations Group on the Information Society. Maybe, yeah, maybe we can switch these guys. Yeah. Good morning. My name is Stephanie Uvrara. I'm from the UK government, specifically Department of Science, Innovation and Technology. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Eva Kutashenko from the same department in UK government. Thank you. Hey, my name is Li Pinza. I work uh, actually at UNCTED. Hi, everyone. I'm Pratik Sabuf, program specialist dealing with digital policies and digital transformation at UNESCO. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Siope Bardak Yofa. I'm from the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, uh, Bangkok, uh, Thailand. Happy to be here. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Dan Yakolovic. I'm the Director of Digitalization and Informatics at the Food and Agriculture Organization. Hello, this is Shizuka Murika. I uh, live in the U.S. and teach at the University of Virginia, and also I teach at the Kyoto uh, College of Graduate Schools for Informatics, um, and I teach leadership, and I promote SDG project in my courses. That's why I'm here. Manuel Acosta Cabral, I'm from Portugal, uh, from the Portuguese Regulator uh, of uh, Electronic Communications. Thank you. Um, can we get, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Anke Schlika. I work at GIZ, the German Development Corporation Agency. Hello, everyone. My name is Sebastian Rowerski. I'm working as an advisor in digital governance also at GIZ. Good afternoon, I'm Ellie, I'm from the US, and I'm part of the Institute for Public Policy and Diplomacy Research. Hello, I'm Paul, I'm Paul Gaskell, I'm also from the UK Department for Science, Innovation and Technology. You've got four of us in the room here today, which I think mm -hmm. demonstrates how important we think this issue is. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Taichiro Fujino. I'm a fellow of the JPNIC, which is a management body of the IP address in Japan, and we will work at a UNICEF Digital Center, Digital Center of Excellence next week. Nice to meet you. I'm Simon Ellis. <laughs> That's Paul. Yeah. You have it. <laughs> Hello everyone, Paul Blaker, also from the UK government. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. I'm Gitanjali, I'm from the International uh, Telecommunication Union. Um, yes, and colleagues online, do we? Yes. Two online? Um, 
I can't, I, we can't see you right now. I can't see you online, so I can't see your names either on the screen. Uh, but would you mind unmuting and, and uh, introducing yourselves, please? Okay. Yeah, stand by. Josephine. Good morning. My name is Josephine Jambi. I'm uh, from the Kenya Embassy in Brussels, joining online. Thank you. Great. Um, and I think we have another participant online. No, there's just, there's no other participants online? Sorry, stand by with. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, and we've had a couple people join us. We're just introducing ourselves, if you don't mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Sorina Sefa from UNICA. Adam Ajala from UNICA. Hello, Hi. sir. Nice to see you. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mark Tarsek from Unica. Um, and we're, there's not very many of us at the table. I would invite all of the UK and everyone else uh, <laughs> to, to join us at the table. Please feel free. Um, there's no, yeah, please. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. And um, just uh, again, this is um, this is an open session of the UN Group on Information Society, and so we would invite all of our participants to to chime in on some of the the issues that we wanted to discuss today. Um, and really, just uh, this has a lot to do with um, how we look forward to the WISIS Forum in 2024, and also toward the WISIS Plus 20 review. Um, and to, to gather ideas from UN agencies, that the 32 UN agencies that form part of the, the UNGIS, um, as well as our other stakeholders. And there's been a few sessions um, at, this, uh, at the Internet Governance Forum uh, on WISIS and the WISIS process where we stand. Um, I think just as a, a way of introduction on the, the context here, um, and some of you have heard me already uh, talk about this a little bit, but we are at an incredibly important pivotal point for the digital technologies and the potential impact on the SDGs. We celebrated the uh, SDG summit about three weeks ago. The, there's a wide recognition that obviously we are off track for most of the SDGs. In fact, we're only on track for 15% of the targets. At the same time, as we look toward accelerators and how we are actually going to speed up our progress against the SDGs, technology repeatedly comes up as an important theme. And during the SDG summit, we, together with ITU, released a report called the SDG Digital Acceleration Agenda that identified that 70% of SDG targets could be positively impacted by uh, the use of te technology. Um, and so when we look at the picture of, of where we are with the SDGs, where we are with the power of technologies, which is ever increasing, we need to really understand how we're going to leverage the processes that we have, like the Internet Governance Forum, like WISIS, um, uh, and really understand what's going to be the next phase to take us forward. And so um, related to that, and for those of you who um, haven't attended all of those sessions, there have been a couple of, of open sessions. There was the uh, uh, CSTD open consultation yesterday. Today, earlier, we had a consultation on, on WISIS uh, plus 20. And, you know, there's a few things that are coming up. Um, one is that the job is not finished. I think that's pretty obvious. Um, I think there's a sense that there was a, a lot of optimism 20 years ago when WISIS was created um, and then reviewed 10 years ago. 
and that the the issues, some of the enduring issues are still with us, like closing the digital divide um, and truly creating the information and knowledge society that there was that aspiration to create. Um, and I think that when we look at what's happening in digital right now, in addition to the SDG summit and the midway point of the SDGs, the Secretary General has called for a summit of the future next year. Um, and the summit of the future, a big piece of that will be uh, involving the Global Digital Compact, which is a process that will be continuing throughout all of 2024. And these will be the determination of really the next phase of how humanity is going to leverage digital technology for all of our benefit. And so for the SDGs in 2030, but also beyond. And so I think it's important that we as a UN group on information society with our stakeholders really understand how we're going to put this effort together, how we're going to uh, drive this forward together as a multi-stakeholder um, endeavor and really understand as well how we as uh, the community around WISIS can inform the global digital compact process of next year as well as um, the some of the future more, more generally. Um, and whatever happens at the global digital compact, be prepared to take forward the directions that are set there and continue as the platform of implementation when it comes to really driving forward the original goals of creating um, the information and knowledge society. Um, so what we wanted to do today is really gather some of your thoughts on the kinds of things that we should be focused on. For those of you who are in the UN system, we'd like to get your thoughts on what you're doing now and how this contributes to the bigger, um, the, the broader agenda here. And for those of you who are not in the UN system, we'd love to get your thoughts on what you think we as the UN system can do more. Um, there have been a few comments in the consultations in the last couple of days about the need for UN system to work together, and I think um, that is very true, and we have definitely uh, made great strides in doing that, and I think we need to continue to do that, um, but we would love to know more about what you think the UN system can do to really support the intergovernmental system, the member states, uh, really to achieve these goals that we've set for ourselves. Um, so, with that, Gitanjali, I'm going to turn to you for your observations as well, and then we'll uh, turn to the group. And I just also, sorry, before I do that, just want to acknowledge um, uh, with gratitude um, our co-organizers. I've already mentioned um, our co-chair ITU, but we have also uh, UNESCO, we have UNCTAD, um, thanks for joining, and we have um, the regional representation this year from... Uh, <laughs> from ESCAP, and it's great to have Unica here as well. Um, so very welcome. Um, Gitanjali, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Rob. It's uh, uh, great to uh, co-chair UNJIS uh, this year uh, with uh, UNDP, and of course with the able guidance of our uh, vice chairs. A couple of years back, we uh, actually uh, initiated the, uh, the process to include uh, regional commissions. So we have rotational chairmanship of regional commissions. It was ECA last year and uh, uh, ESCAP this year. Uh, so that they always give us the advice in terms of the regional uh, implementation process. So um, colleagues, just to remind you about the uh, mandate of UNJIS. Uh, UNJIS is a product of the chief executive board. We have more than 32 UN agencies who are uh, part. Um, I think it's, it has increased because the CEB has increased its membership. Uh, so it has increased because um, I think originally UN regional commissions were not a part of CEB, but now they are, and there are quite a few other UN agencies. Um, so um, basically uh, what UNJIS is supposed to do, it was endorsed by the CEB to serve as an interagency mechanism to consolidate substantive issues facing uh, digital or the information and knowledge societies. So uh, it has a very important uh, 
mandate uh, to ensure that we work closely. Uh, we have a great digital cooperation within the UN system to highlight the importance of digital. And we have been doing this. Uh, I just want to share some of the practical uh, instances uh, where we have been collaborating to make joint statements and to do side events together. Um, we did one recently at the high level political forum to highlight the importance of digital. Uh, we participated at the fifth United Nations conference on LDCs as UNJIS, uh, highlighting how digital is important to advance the SDGs. We did it in collaboration with Qatar. So all of these, we also do it in collaboration with the member state. Uh, the previous one was, uh, the HLPF one was done in collaboration with Peru. Uh, the African Internet Governance Forum, which we did closely with uh, Maktar and the UN ECA colleagues. And there are a lot more which you can uh, find online. We also submit joint statements together as 32 UN agencies, highlighting the importance of our work with our respective mandates. Uh, FAO focusing on e-agriculture, uh, WHO focusing on e-health, and so on and so forth. So uh, for the uh, people who are not very familiar with uh, ONGIS, it's a great opportunity to learn that uh, it's an interagency mechanism which has been highlighting the importance of digital uh, in other UN processes. I'd like to hand over the floor to Pratik, uh, Vice Chair. Please, Pratik. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Gitanjali. Thanks, Rob, uh, for the able leadership of UNDP and ITU of ONGIS and uh, uh, for organizing this session here as an open session to also further socialize what ONGIS does because this is one of the feedback that we've been getting over the past two days through the open consultations on the VSIS Plus 20 review as to how the UN agencies cooperate and coordinate their work. Uh, and Angus is, is one of those avenues. And as Gitanjali highlighted, there is cooperation in joint events, but also joint statements, which we believe can be further reinforced. And in fact, uh, we've not mentioned this uh, during the conversations, but the, the, the UN SDG fund is, is, has, is launching a digital window yes. uh, to f catalyze uh, digital transformation and digital development at the country level. And that digital window process also has a technical support group mm -hmm. where uh, the UN agencies are involved, which is in the secretariat being supported by UNDP and ITU. UNESCO is there, UNEP is there, uh, UNCTAD is there, and uh, I think there are several other uh, UNCDF is there. And this process is actually going on, and we, as we speak, webinars are being organized to inform uh, UNRCs. So there was this point made, I think, yesterday that there is no coordination at the country level, and it's only at the HQ level. But while that may be valid, there is effort to, to strengthen coordination and build joint country programs. Uh, just wanted to flag that. Um, I, I, I don't want to take too much time. I think there will be opportunity later to also talk about uh, what UNESCO sees Angus's role going forward, and also some of the contributions that UNESCO would be making as part of the VSIS Plus 20 review process. But I'll stop here for now. Thank you. Well, I will speak on behalf of uh, um, UNCTED, but also our uh, co-facilitators of uh, the VSIS Action Line on Business. And the International Trade Center, ITC, and the Universal Postal Union, UPU. Um, the three organizations actually are facilitating their business action line on e-business. So the moderator has asked us to uh, brief uh, uh, you uh, what is being done by uh, their organizations. I just want to uh, highlight uh, um, one thing which is, uh, uh, in fact, uh, is in response to the evolution of the environment. And the environment is that now we are in digital era. <laughs> well, digital, the word is being more used than information uh, when we started with this. So um, the work of these uh, organizations also has actually shifted towards helping um, developing countries uh, to benefit from the digital, digital economy. It started with the e-commerce, since uh, in which section nine it says e-business. So the work started on e-commerce, but now 
uh, are more kind of uh, uh, focus is on the uh, digital economy, which is uh, definitely larger than the e-commerce. And so uh, in Antet uh, itself, uh, in 2016, we launched the e-trade for all initiative. And this initiative included uh, 35 partner organizations. And I want to echo their comments from our uh, moderator and our Gitanjali and, uh, um, and our UNESCO colleague, which is uh, indeed in the UN system, we are actually joining forces and to do something together and to avoid the uh, duplication of efforts. And so finding synergies is definitely something that we're achieving. And, and then um, in 2021, UNCTAD had a conference and the conference uh, uh, gave uh, UNCTAD a, a new mandate to strengthen its work in the digital economy. And for that purpose, uh, uh, the UNCTAD uh, former e-commerce week is now called uh, uh, UNCTAD e-week. And so the, 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 um, the forthcoming e-week is going to be held from 4 to 8 December uh, in Geneva. Uh, we hope that you will be able to participate in this uh, event. Basically, um, this event will discuss how to shape the future um, of digital economy. And lastly, I want to uh, share with you that uh, UNCTAD, together with other uh, organizations like IMF, uh, WTO, um, has developed a guideline for collecting data in digital trade. And uh, since data is now also very, very important, and under these uh, guidelines, uh, capacity building is being provided to National Statistical Bureau to gather data on digital trade. Thank you. Siope, did you want to just, as a vice chair this year, do you want to just mention a couple of things? Oh, okay, sorry. Yes, just to uh, uh, say a uh, few words thanking uh, the, the organizers, and uh, we're, we're very pleased to be here. We look forward to continue supporting uh, on this uh, process going forward. And um, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll stop here, but I'll share more updates later on when we, when we do the, the rounds. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, all right, colleagues, the floor is open. I think um, there's no, we can either do it toward the tab or we can take volunteers. Um, <laughs> but, and do not, don't feel compelled to speak, but we'd love to hear both from uh, our UN partners as well as um, other stakeholders, member states and, and other civil society, et cetera, um, on what you think, what, what you're working on now that can help contribute, um, for particularly from the UN side, and what you think we, uh, as the UN system, and working under this auspices of the UN Group on Information Society can do um, to work toward both WISIS next year as well as the WISIS plus 20 review process. We have a volunteer right here from <laughs> FAO. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, um, uh, maybe just to break the ice. So I'm from the FAO and um, uh, as, as you mentioned, Rob, the SDGs, we are, let's say, seven harvests away. Yeah. That's not enough, exactly. and we are very late. So we feel at FAO, uh, uh, we have a s very strong sense of urgency to, to move and uh, uh, transform the agri-food systems. And the way to do it is we see that one of the key elements there is the digitalization and transformation that digitalization enables. So we are at the right place here uh, and, and with, with colleagues from other UN agencies and in, in the other processes and forums uh, in, able, in being able to do so. So what do we do? We, we, we try to assist uh, our members, the, the, the member countries, in, um, and not only them, but actually also extending our services to the rural communities and farmers, in not only digitalizing, but actually enabling transformation, and, and uh, in that way trying to trans uh, accelerate uh, um, achievements of the SDGs. Uh, and this is very important. Uh, why I mention it here? Because FAO, we, we are very strong when it comes to agriculture and, and food and, and related topics. However, we need help, for example, to reach the last mile. We cannot do the, uh, what did we hear? One third of the population does not have access. 
Uh, what we are seeing is that uh, maybe two years ago, not having access was maybe not convenient, not really good, but today is essential. So we see actually rural populations falling behind, actually being out of the game, if I can say that way, by not having access, they cannot take part into the larger uh, economy or uh, uh, um, even selling their products and, and some basic things they used to uh, do before. So what can we do as, uh, uh, as part of this forum? I mean, of, of course we coordinate with other UN agencies, but I think this forum can be very useful to give some guidance or, or maybe some recommendations to VCs on, on what the expectations would be. Uh, uh, also, uh, in a view of supporting the, the Summit of the Future and the GDC, I think this is important. We see it as uh, very complementary and uh, supportive actions, both of them. Um, the way we also see it is it's important to keep in mind why we do this and then see uh, what process, what are the strengths of each process and where where this process can actually assist and quickly. Um, so th this is our view and I think it's very important just to, to, to go back to the beginning where we have only seven seasons left. Thank you so much. Thanks. Maktar, do you wanna? Yeah. Great. Maktar, I don't think it's, yeah. Thank you and uh, good afternoon again. I think it is a very step uh, on the work of Angus. Uh, before, let me highlight uh, some key activity related to the work of uh, Angus undertaken by UNECA. For, uh, for the, to achieve the SDG 16.9, we are working on the digital ID program and we try to support African country through our digital center of excellence on digital ID, digital threat, and digital economy to support African country to have their digital ID program. As uh, you know, digital ID is very important uh, in terms of uh, achieving this sustainable development goal. Also, I know because uh, five million people in Africa live without any legal form of identity. And to leave no one behind, we need to, to identify these people to make them part of this digital era. Second, on uh, digital uh, transformation, as we know, digital technology, it is a means of implementation of the SDG when we go to the, uh, to the SDG 17. And uh, we have 40% uh, of our population uh, connected on internet, it means 60% are offline. And we need to connect these people to achieve this SDG. For that, it is crucial to expand the broadband access. And without broadband, uh, we can't achieve this, uh, uh, this SDG, Why we are focused uh, on supporting African country to expand uh, their broadband uh, infrastructure through several initiatives to put in place the right policy to attract investment, also to bring on board some uh, investment company to support them through a PPP or another form of partenariat to build uh, this uh, broadband uh, network. We, we are several countries now have beneficiary offices like Guinea, uh, Cameroon, uh, Ethiopia, and others work with private companies to expand their broadband infrastructure. Another issue is the capacity building, very important. We need to build the capacity of uh, African citizens, such as the youth. The youth who represent in 2050, 70% of our population, and it will represent 42% of the youth world population. And we have several initiatives uh, at UNECA to build the capacity of young generation on uh, artificial intelligence, emerging technology, STS technology, and uh, in innovation. And we have also another initiative called it uh, African Girl Coding Camp to build the skills of a uh, girl from 12 to 25 years in uh, artificial intelligence, in uh, web gaming, turtle chess. And this program, joint program, we have with uh, ITU and uh, UNESCO. And as of today, we have trained around 30, 35,000 young girls across 
the, the continent. Also, another important program, it is a WISIS. We organize a WISIS uh, outcome for Africa to, to present the progress made by African countries in the implementation of the WISIS uh, outcome. It is a yearly meeting, and the next meeting will be held in December in, uh, in Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe, and we'll invite all Angus members to be, on, to be part of uh, uh, this uh, me me meeting to discuss also and to prepare also the WCS plus 20 for African uh, country. Of course, we already organized uh, some four weeks ago the African Internet Governance Forum in uh, Abuja in Nigeria, and uh, we, we, we have uh, around 3,005 people attended this uh, meeting. It was a very good meeting, and we discussed a lot of issues uh, about the digital era in Africa. But coming to the work, oh, we also have uh, um, the, the Global Digital Compact. We already organized a meeting in South Africa to discuss on the Africa input uh, uh, on the digital Global Digital Compact. And now we have received a input from 32 member states plus uh, some co private sector and academia. Now coming to the work of Angus, we believe uh, that Angus has an important role to play at the UN uh, level. Why we, we should do have a common, maybe a joint paper and po or a joint position on WCS plus 24 uh, for the WCS. Because we, 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 we need uh, to continue on our, in Africa position, we need to continue WCS after 2025. And I think uh, it will be the same in several other re regions in the world. And we have uh, to internally to prepare a joint paper to make a proposal on why we should do continue with this behind 2025. Also, all, we also have an op opportunity to make a very good contribution on the Global Digital Compact. I think there are a lot of consultation going uh, across the region. And we can use this opportunity. We have an African position we can share with the Angus member. And we'll see we've, uh, as a, the contribution of other region how we can have uh, one contribution uh, on Angus uh, to the global uh, digital compact. Because and the Angus can reflect uh, all these 35 UN agencies, and we are all across the world. And I think uh, this will be a robust proposal for the global digital compact. Also, we have to organize ourselves to see what role we are going to play on the summit of the FITI. It is uh, something very important we can think about at the Angus. As you know, also, we have this uh, 12 high level impact initiative uh, defined by the Secretary General. I think at the, U, at the Angus level, we should discuss which, in which area we should focus. I think one area as led by uh, UNDP, we have some area led by uh, UNCTA, UNDESA, UNCTA, we have to see where technology uh, is more impactful, and we'll see how Angus can play a key role. It is uh, some uh, information, some SUG I would like to, uh, to share with you, and, uh, and also we'll invite you all to attend. Uh, if you have any meeting in Africa, we, you, are well, we are, you are welcome to attend. We organize also in collaboration of Angus. As well as, as last time, I think we have a request uh, to have the Tech Envoy Office mm -hmm. representative at the Angus. I don't know if uh, it's done or... Uh, yes, yes. They, were, they were in the previous meeting, um, they have been invited. Yeah. All right. Uh, but I don't see them here. Let me stop there. Thank you. Thanks, Maktar. And uh, I think digital work in Africa is going to get a big boost by your new executive secretary. Ambassador Calvin Gatete from Rwanda, who will be joining UNECA, I understand, very soon, and has been le co-leading the Global Digital Compact process um, based in New York. So um, you're going to get a very savvy and informed player. Um, so that's, that's great news for the UN system. Um, maybe less great news for the, the Global Digital Compact process at the moment, but I'm sure um, they'll find a, a suitable replacement there. Um, thanks so much. Um, uh, just, um, uh, just for colleagues who have joined, 
Quentin. <laughs> oh, sp speak of the devil. Yeah. <laughs> Quentin, welcome. We were just, uh, Mokhtar was just asking if the UN Tech Envoy's office was represented in Angus. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for, for colleagues who have just kind of come into the room, um, this is an open meeting of the uh, UN Group on Information Society, and we have sort of, we've done some intros, so if, as you take the floor, if you could introduce yourselves, um, those of you who, who haven't done so. Um, and what we're looking for are ideas um, from within the UN system, ideas on what you're working on now and how you think Angus can be uh, a, 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 a positive force in bringing forward ideas to WISIS Forum um, and others. And for those who are stakeholders outside of the UN system, just your thoughts on what the UN can do more in this space. Um, Dennis, you were raising your hand before. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, uh, Robert. I will try to be uh, quick for the first question, what we are doing. Uh, UNDESA is uh, WISIS Action Line Coordinator for uh, three action lines. Uh, and for C7 e-government, uh, we are working on uh, UN e-government survey as we speak. Uh, we will be launching it uh, next year. Uh, we are not only looking at the uh, uh, national uh, portals, but we are also looking at the most populous city in each country. Uh, and in the last edition, uh, out of 193 UN member states, uh, in the most populous city, only 147 of them had an online presence. So there is uh, still lots of work there. While we uh, talk about uh, like concepts such as smart city, uh, we need to uh, also be aware that uh, digital divides between cities is, is also there. Uh, but about your uh, second question, uh, this is plus 20 overall review. Uh, and also, uh, I think the the mandate of uh, Angus, and, and it's very important uh, to see Tech Envoy uh, here in this, because if you look at the mandate of Tech Envoy, uh, it also overlaps with the mandate of Angus, um, and which, uh, which is a recent office after 2019, while CEB goes back, uh, this is an Angus and CEB goes back to 2006. So that's one internal, I think, uh, think for UN system to do, uh, to consider how we can really uh, integrate our work with the Tech Envoy, with the Angus. The Angus mission is to raise awareness of ICT issues within the CEB, UN Chief Executive uh, Board. And Angus, I think, has uh, done a great job with that, because if you look at CEB, we are talking about AI, we are talking about data, cybersecurity, innovation, future of work. So technology is, is just there. And uh, so that's a good thing. I think at least Angus Mission CEB is aware of it, which is good. Uh, but uh, now I think we need to better coordinate within the UN system. And of course, we would like to hear also from the member states here. But that's, uh, that's one point there. If it comes to WISIS Plus 20 overall review, uh, okay, there is this annual WISIS forum, and ITU is um, doing the WISIS Plus 20. I mean, at least uh, ITU's WISIS Plus 20 is the is the upcoming one uh, in in May, right? Uh, so, I think it's very important that uh, ITU, UNESCO. Uh, and UNCTAD uh, and UNDP uh, and, and all other agencies who are doing WISIS Plus 20 uh, coordinates. We are, uh, we are reviewing WISIS action lines uh, every year. So UNCTAD, uh, UNCTAD is producing this uh, progress in WISIS, uh, WISIS action lines every year, and I think the deadline is October. So in a way, WISIS action lines are uh, reviewed every year and you have the historical data, what happened since 2016, UNCTAD. And you will uh, do your own uh, visits uh, review, uh, I think, meeting uh, in the coming months, right, in, in next year. So what I want to say is it's, it's very important. ITU's visits review and UNCTAD's visits action line review, we need to work together because it's, it's pretty much uh, the same thing. 
And uh, the same way UNESCO organized this conference in 2015, now uh, UNESCO is organizing uh, 2025 February this conference on capacity building on public administration, which is very important for the VCS plus 20, UNGA's VCS plus 20 overall review, which will be in 2025. Uh, I can also speak to that uh, very briefly. UNGA uh, will adopt a resolution, modalities resolution in August 2024. I'm, I'm just get making up the dates based on uh, past experience. Uh, and then of course we will have uh, two co-facilitators uh, the same way we had uh, for the GDC. Uh, and by the way, uh, the co-facilitator for uh, for uh, GDC, I think it's just been uh, announced, the new one, uh, I think it's Zambia. replaced by Zambia, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so so we, will, we will have the co-facilitators for the VCS Plus 20 overall review, and then uh, it will be the last six months of VCS Plus 20. If, if, uh, if we follow the history, uh, it will be the busiest times, and all your inputs uh, will be uh, will be there, uh, but most importantly, I think uh, ECOSOC uh, will look at the CSTD report uh, in July. So it's important that if we wanna pass uh, more messages to uh, GA, uh, ECOSOC uh, CSTD report is is key. Uh, and then in the last six months, uh, in the last three four months, uh, member states. With, in, in, uh, with involvement of all stakeholders, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, we'll look at the VCS Plus 20, where they will decide the future of VCS Action Lines, the, where they will decide the future of IGF, and uh, future of partnership on measuring ICT for development, uh, or even ANGIS, uh, you know. Uh, so they are all made reference uh, from the VCS Plus 10 outcome document. And at the same time, uh, we are lucky because just one year earlier, we will have the GDC in hand. So more or less uh, the same, I would say, sub-thematic areas that we will have in GDC will also be part of the VCS plus 20 outcome document. So uh, that means uh, maybe the negotiations will be more smoother, but uh, now, uh, questions for me is, for example, VCS Action Lines was created in 2005, before Facebook, before iPhone, right? So now we have uh, GDC with different subsets. Uh, so which ones are more relevant moving forward? Do we still need all the VCS Action Lines? I mean, I think these are important questions we should ask, or do we need more action lines? Uh, so I think when we are reviewing some of the questions that we should ask to the stakeholders, do we wanna continue the status quo, or maybe we want to really bring everything together, and uh, you heard from member states, there is lots of duplication. So maybe we wanna address those duplication with the help of uh, new actors and everyone uh, on the table and uh, come up with something that's accepted and meaningful to member states but also to all stakeholders. Yeah. Thanks, Dennis. That's some great thoughts there. I think there was a request for the floor down here from part of the UK delegation. Um, thank you very much. So, yeah, um, Eva Zuchenko, part of UK government. I'm, I'm breaking up the internal UN discussion, if you don't mind me, um, and opening it up a bit more. Um, uh, it's a really useful pick-up point, and I really appreciate a lot of the comments, um, a lot of which I agree with. But I want to pick up on this, the language you've started to use on UN um, member states, and then we have stakeholders, and this sort of felt a little bit like an afterthought in the way we've talked about it. Um, and this is exactly a point you asked at the beginning, what more do we need from the UN? And I've been listening quite carefully to what stakeholders have brought up in a number of sessions. Um, I note that Angus kind of have a, has a few vice chairs that are obviously, you know, as, as you were talking about, the wizards process has a lot of history of why the structure is what it is. Um, but I'm just thinking of all the ones that I didn't sort of hear, and, and maybe they are part in some form or another, but you know, to see on the cyber crime side, ILO, you mentioned the future of work, OHCHR from the human rights side. I would 
probably struggle to name a UN body that doesn't have a digital yeah. mandate in some degree because of the nature of digital. So, so I think one recommendation from my side would be to make sure that all the UN bodies that have a stake mm -hmm. in the digital agenda, and uh, unfortunately that will probably mean all UN bodies, um, are, some, are engaged in this process in some form, um, and I'm hoping that you're already thinking about that. Um, but the main point I wanted to make is on multi-stakeholder participation, which we haven't heard about during this IGF, so I'm mentioning it for the first time. Uh, I'm sure, as you, as you will not have heard the word multi-stakeholder. Mm -hmm. um, but thinking ahead to the GDC and the WISIS process, it was really helpful to have these two terms mentioned here. Member states will, are, are already worried about how much bandwidth this is going to take to do essentially two processes at the same time, and what that means for outcomes. Um, stakeholders will find it even harder. They have no way of understanding how to engage. It's taking a really long time to understand what the next steps look like, and they feel left out. There's been a lot of criticism, which I'm sure you will have heard on the GDC consultation, as much as there was an effort to include a lot of stakeholders. But, but that's something that the UN can help fully do, setting out exactly what's happening, how it's happening, how one can engage. Even if that happens through member states, we are thinking individually about in the UK government about how we can continue to engage stakeholders in the GDC, for example. Um, and relatedly, it would be really helpful to have a clear vision from the UN system on how they see the future of WISIS and the future of GDC linked together. It does feel like there's tension at the moment and we're sort of having a lot of speculations, mm. um, not just stakeholders, but also within um, governments on w what, what might be the outcomes. Um, I've just heard now from previous speaker about the GDC helping us in the WISIS. You could see the opposite of the GDC making the WISIS even harder, depending on where we are landing with the outcomes. But I think that's another area where we really need to look at that. So um, I'll leave you with those thoughts. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's, a, that's very helpful. Um, Quinton, I, I won't turn to you right this second um, and put you on the spot right now, but I will be looking to you to, to respond on some of these questions that come up about GDC, please. Um, other requests for the floor? Siope, please. Um, so perhaps before the, the uh, more interesting discussions, let me uh, uh, share the work that ASCAP is doing. Uh, um, and uh, afterwards, I'll, I'll react to, to some of the points that has been raised. So from ASCAP's side at the, the regional level, uh, 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 many of the projects and activities that we're supporting uh, 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 contributes to, to many uh, uh, WISIS action line, in particular C11, International and uh, Regional Cooperation. Uh, I wanted to share that uh, uh, this year, uh, the ESCAP Commission adopted a resolution, uh, 7910, which uh, promotes digital cooperation at the, at the regional level. Uh, uh, um, uh, based on our, uh, our, our Asia-Pacific Information Superhighway Initiative. So this uh, 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 resolution sort of operationalized uh, 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 the Secretariat to support member states on, on regional cooperation in this area. Um, uh, ESCAP will be co-hosting with Armenia the seventh uh, session of the, the Asia-Pacific Information Superhighway and WISIS Regional Review in Yerevan, Armenia. Uh, 8, 9th November. Uh, this will be an opportunity for, for member states to discuss the progress, uh, progress on the implementation of the APS uh, action plan. Um, and there will be a, a, a dedicated session for, for WISIS regional review as we usually do uh, uh, every year. Uh, so basically we invite member states to share their country projects uh, of what they have done, uh, usually uh, uh, WISIS uh, prize winners. Uh, so we look forward to that. Uh, we work together with, with IT on, on that front. Um, next year, uh, uh, we, uh, we will, uh, ESCAP will be working together with Kazakhstan to host a ministerial conference on digital inclusion and transformation uh, in October uh, 2024 in Kazakhstan. Uh, uh, so this is something that perhaps uh, 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 opportunities for, for uh, collaboration with other agencies. Um, we, um, uh, for that uh, event, we will be uh, working on a publication, uh, the Asia Pacific Digital Transformation Report, uh, that will be input to that uh, event, and uh, we welcome any, any uh, uh, appetite for, uh, for, co for collaboration on that uh, uh, publication. Um, 
so, so those are the, the activities I wanted to, to share at the moment. So just to react to the, the perhaps the, the, the future of, of, uh, of WISIS and IGF uh, in general. Um, the last two years, especially during COVID time, uh, uh, when there was limited uh, uh, interaction and, and meetings, um, uh, at least from my office, I tend to receive a lot of uh, emails from UNGIS uh, requests on inputs uh, and provide. And, uh, uh, I guess one of the things that I, I, I think that uh, perhaps we could start to, to discuss going forward on how to improve efficiency on, on internally within uh, UNGIS uh, team. Um, especially the, if we can try to establish early on in the year sort of a work plan, what do we anticipate to do in the year? Uh, this would assist uh, uh, us to try and, and fit in to our, our individual uh, projects and, and, uh, and work. I think that uh, although it may not be uh, concrete, but at least there's some, some kind of uh, early plan uh, discussed uh, uh, so that I think that it will assist uh, uh, improving efficiency in the, in the longer run. Um, the, the, the other issue that I think uh, I tend to agree with, we did this like three or four years uh, ago, uh, reviewing the, the, the effectiveness of uh, WISIS, and one of the issues that uh, I have uh, an issue with is the, uh, if we cannot measure it, then it's very difficult for us to, to move forward, all right? Uh, I do uh, take note that this was before uh, SDG, so, um, uh, and this is something perhaps we should uh, be mindful of if of a new uh, which is a framework, perhaps it needs to be measured to be able to uh, uh, review the progress, right? Uh, so it's very difficult to talk about uh, 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 action lines uh, and when we can't, uh, really difficult to, to measure. So I, th I think this is something that uh, uh, we need to, to be mindful of uh, uh, going forward. Um, so those are the two issues that I wanted to highlight. One is on efficiency of, of internal processes and how we can uh, better uh, uh, plan for, for internal processes. And the uh, other issue is the um, measuring uh, uh, which going forward. Thank you. Thanks, Jochen. Um, yes, down here, please. If you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. And Thank you, Chairman. Uh, my name's Winston Roberts. I was at Geneva 2003, and I'm one of the people who helped negotiate the text of the Geneva Principles. So I, I was representing the New Zealand government at that time. Um, so I distinctly remember some of the arguments. Some of them I remember less distinctly with the passage of time, of course. Um, but I'm not here as a government rep today. I'm actually here representing or working with the, one of the global NGOs who are part of the multi-stakeholder fraternity, that is IFLA, the International Federation of Library Associations. We were present in Geneva. I was not them. I was New Zealand government, but they were present there. Um, and they are here present in the IGF. They've been following the IGF ever since it was set up uh, by the Tunis Outcomes document. And IFLA uh, supports or would support, and I would like to endorse what our colleague just here, sorry I missed your name, but what you said about a certain amount of ambiguity between the, the WISIS action lines and the, GA, uh, the global compact, etc. There is, uh, there has been um, so much work done by various UN uh, agencies in the years since, in the 20 years since, and um, so many technical developments that we really do need uh, a clear path through all of these developments towards some sort of unified scheme or unified concept of information and uh, information linked to democracy and information linked to equal rights and equal opportunities for everybody. And I am saying that as a matter of conviction, but also because it is the policy of the International Federation of Library Associations. Libraries are a mainstream infrastructure in all societies, in all countries, and they, they are platforms for information. 
The C3 action line for uh, access to information is one of the most critical. And information is not just something you go to a public library to get from a book. It is everything. It is the lifeblood of society. Without information, you cannot do anything. You cannot exist. And whether this is printed information or streamed or, or online information, it is the lifeblood of society. And it must be available equi equitably and equally to all sectors of society, whether uh, regardless of gender, regardless of race, regardless of religious conviction, regardless of uh, economic status. And I would like to see more clarity uh, d encouraged, urged through the United Nations system for that concept of equitable access to information. Uh, and IFLA, of course, as the major NGO in that sphere, um, will be always willing to talk to you about that. IFLA is involved. They're here today at the IGF. They go to Geneva to talk to uh, IGF um, headquarters from time to time. So feel free to contact us, IFLA, and talk about these things. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks for the historical perspective as well. Please. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I just agree completely with uh, this equitable access to information to everyone. And it would be wonderful if we have stratified sort of marketing strategy uh, by age or something, by generation. Because my students, graduate students, they are young in their 20s, but sometimes all the way to 40s. But a lot of students in their 20s, they don't have, they don't go out to UN site to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I have to give them, I have to give them links, and yet that's not where they live anymore. They, and I just looked up Instagram and to see if you guys are there, but you're not. So, that would be wonderful if we have sort of marketing strategy targeted for specific audience. And also, one thing that I noticed by teaching young people for, from China and some other developing countries, they think, okay, you guys, developed countries, had your chance to poison the world, right? <laughs> it's our turn. And that's the mentality that a lot of people have. And if, if we can somehow change that mentality, I don't know how, but, but one of the ways is to equitable you know, access to information. If they are young people from developing countries, if they are exposed day by day, this is important. <laughs> you gotta do all these things then they may change their behavior. So that's something that I would love to see more of a marketing, just like any other corporations are doing, because corporations, they are downloading their values. But I don't think we are doing that enough. Thank you so much. Other requests for the floor? Paul. Paul, <laughs> nice to see you. Thanks, Robert, uh, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'm Paul Donahoe from the Universal Postal Union, the UPU. Um, we are one of the uh, Action Line facilitators for Action Line C7 e-business, uh, along with UNCTAD uh, and ITC. And uh, you probably heard from Shamika this morning uh, with uh, the activities that we're doing in uh, in Action Line C7 e-business and. And I just wanted to, um, first of all, uh, endorse uh, the comments that have been made previously by, by Dennis from, uh, uh, from DESA as well about um, uh, the action line um, 
contribution to, to WISIS uh, is being very important because connectivity is, is not the only issue uh, in the information society and in WISIS and, and, and action lines play a key role in bringing the value uh, of this information society to life and, and to address some of the issues that have been talked about already um, in the session today. Um, first of all, let me just uh, go, ba go back to the first question that you raised, Robert, about uh, some of the activities that we've been doing uh, in C7E business and particularly at the UPU. Um, then we uh, have uh, a particular focus because of uh, postal, um, public postal infrastructure is an important access point for the information society. And so our digital transformation um, program uh, at the UPU is working with member states on assessing the, the digital transformation capability of this public infrastructure. And uh, we are providing um, support to mobilise resources to help improve um, that, um, that public postal infrastructure. And as Shamika mentioned this morning, it's very important for the, the bridge between the digital and the physical world of our digital economy. Uh, because uh, we are still physical people uh, and a lot of the business that is conducted on the internet results in some physical output as well. Uh, and so that's where the postal network, uh, just like the library network, plays an important connection point between society and the digital economy. Uh, and so our agency, the UPU, is working very hard to, um, to work with member states to ensure that that's happening and our digital tra transformation program is actively working at the member state level. Um, and that's all towards the goal of SDG 16, which is improving uh, institutions uh, to help support the communities. Uh, and this is an important point uh, about um, inclusive uh, uh, element of the digital economy. This is still something that we have heard uh, this week in IGF, we've heard in previous WISIS, that the digital divide continues to grow. Uh, and the community access is so important and not, again, just about the technology but also about the usability of the technology in the communities. And this is where we all, as UN agencies, actually have a common goal about ensuring the inclusion of the entire society um, in this digital economy. Uh, and that's where, as the, the representative from the UK eloquently said, all UN agencies now have a digital agenda. Um, uh, and so uh, I think that's an important thing that I'll pick up on uh, with answer to your, question, your second question, Robert, about uh, the future for Rangers. Um, some other things that we're doing at the UPU as well, uh, we are the, the only UN agency that actually operates a space on the internet. Um, we have a, a top level domain uh, which makes the UPU very active in the ICANN community as well, in the technical community. Uh, and so our dot post top level domain um, is uh, something that is uh, a project of the UPU to help strengthen the capability of this public institution in the technical part of uh, the digital economy. Uh, and there's a lot of work that we're doing there with ICANN uh, as well, uh, with our um, role in the, the GAC uh, as an observer uh, and our technical role in the registry community. Uh, as a registry operator. So we hold a very unique capability at the UPU to bridge between the, the ICANN, the WISIS uh, and IGF um, spaces uh, in this discussion. And we do that in close collaboration uh, with UNCTAD, uh, with ITC and with ITU uh, as well. Um, uh, and uh, this is something that I think that uh, comes to your second question, Robert, about uh, UNGIS, uh, and what is the future of UNGIS and, and the future within the context of the WISIS Plus 20 review? And I think uh, I want to reinforce the point that was made earlier that UNGIS is actually an official body um, recognised within the, the WISIS uh, action, um, within the WISIS uh, declaration. And I think that there is an opportunity for us to be stronger in our coordination of the UN um, agencies in this process and particularly to address some of the concerns that member states are having about the coordination within the UN system on these processes that are happening at the moment. Uh, and um, as Dennis uh, mentioned, there are reports uh, going through CSTD uh, to the General Assembly um, we have a voice, uh, but I think that we need to use that voice more actively um, and use that as an opportunity to bridge the discussions between 
different um, spheres of the UN uh, within um, Geneva, within uh, New York uh, and within other locations of the UN as well where these discussions are taking place. We miss that coordination and I think that's something that UNJUS can actively um, take a, a role in. Um, and I think that there is a responsibility of all agencies, as was pointed out by um, the UK, all agencies within UNJUS as well, to make sure that their voice is heard mm -hmm. and to be participating in the UNJUS discussions. So as well as uh, the, the great suggestions about putting plan, um, uh, making planning available so that there's visibility and, and that gives the opportunity for engagement uh, within the UN system. But I think there's also an op uh, a responsibility on all of us uh, to make sure that we contribute to and just so that it does have a strong voice which does represent the coordination. And the second point about UNJUS is the coordination of action uh, as well. Um, because yes, all UN agencies do have digital capability uh, and do have a digital agenda now. Uh, and I think that we should look at um, how we can coordinate that capability for the best use of public funds. Um, uh, and I think we are still operating in some ways in silos sometimes within the UN system mm -hmm. in this space. Uh, and as we are always um, uh, under pressure uh, for the um, accountability of uh, effective use of public funds, I think we have a responsibility in UNJUS to also discuss this. Uh, and I see it being discussed in other forum, in other um, scopes of work that we are doing within the UN system and I think that we're missing that opportunity at UNJUS right now and uh, I would be happy to f have a further discussion and contribution to how we can strengthen that, that activity going forward. So thanks for the opportunity. Thanks so much, Paul. Um, not so, oh, Pratik, you want to come in? And Quinton, I'm going to come back to you, okay? I think I'll, I'll quickly share some of and respond also to some of the points raised by Dennis. Uh, so just in terms of UNESCO's work and action lines, uh, a brief update because we have some new people than the previous room. Uh, UNESCO is working, uh, co-facilitating, co lead facilitating, I mean, uh, five action lines on uh, C3 access to information and knowledge, C7 e-learning and e-science, C8 on cultural diversity, identity, linguistic diversity and local content, C9 on media, and C10 on the ethical dimensions of information societies. Uh, I'll briefly update you some of the, the actions under some of the latest developments per se. Under uh, UNESCO has been working on uh, strengthening internet governance through evidence-based assessments of the internet ecosystem at the national level through the Rome X framework, which was as many of you know, part of the connecting the dots outcomes, uh, which happened in 2015, uh, the rights-based open access and multi-stakeholder approach to internet and these assessments uh, are ongoing or completed in about 45 countries, uh, strengthening the work on uh, access to information uh, in 2022, uh, in 2021 actually at the UNESCO General Conference, it, uh, the information as a public good which was the concept of information as a public good, which was part of the Windhoek Hook Plus 30 declaration was endorsed by the member states. Uh, the work on media and information literacy is, uh, is, is urgent, important, uh, given the current challenges that we face around disinformation, misinformation, hate speech, and including uh, online harms and violence against women actually manifesting into the physical world. And these are issues that UNESCO is actively seized of and is producing knowledge, but is also actively supporting through on-ground projects at the country level. Uh, in terms of some standard setting work, which, which remains a key part of UNESCO's mandate, um, specifically on open solutions, there's work on the open science recommendation, which covers open data, open access, uh, and also open source and the Open Educational Resources uh, recommendation, which has an active dynamic coalition also at the IGF. So there is a link between different fora with VISIS, with IGF, and uh, the standards that have been set up. Coming to the ethics of artificial intelligence, this is informing 
global discussions, actually, even the GDC and also the, the proposed high-level uh, advisory board from the Secretary General, the UNESCO recommendation is forming the basis as it is the only uh, globally accepted standard on artificial intelligence. Um, I would just now coming to some of the points made by Dennis, uh, we will add in, in UNESCO's timeline, we will be reporting on the visits, uh, visits to the general conference in November on the visits achievements and so on from UNESCO. And as, that, as part of that work, uh, some of the proposals are to, to look at visits 2.0 and this was reflected in the discussions this morning of what is the new ambition responding to the developments over the past 20 years. And uh, the idea would be to articulate some of these developments. Uh, there would be, UNESCO is also looking at how to strengthen uh, or sharpen, rather, some of the initiatives under the existing VISIS action lines to make them more relevant, also to align them with the, with the GDC process in, in whatever shape or form possible. Uh, also to how to strengthen the foresight function of VISIS as uh, a multi-stakeholder community that is meeting every year to guide digital development globally. Uh, and UNESCO will, of course, continue to ensure coordination with the VISIS co-leads, ITU, UNDP, UNCTAD, on the relevant action lines, and including uh, the Global Digital Compact. I would just, uh, in closing, mention that after the GDC and the Summit of the Future, uh, the 2025 conference that UNESCO is proposing uh, would, would, would be as a follow-up to those and also in shaping the VISIS process and getting more input. And the theme is around uh, digital governance and digital transformation, but with a specific focus also on empowering public administrations. And this would take place in February 2025 at UNESCO headquarters. Uh, so just in brief to share some of the thinking and as, as all of us are recognizing that this further needs to be refined and this kind of dialogue is extremely helpful to learn from what you said, the conference that you are hosting in uh, Kazakhstan on digital transformation or some of the work that UNDP ITU are going to follow up also. Uh, it's, it's part of building the, the next thinking forward on this. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, Pratik. Um, so, uh, as we sort of draw toward the end of our time here, um, I want to turn to Quinton from the Tech Envoy's office uh, to respond to some of the questions that have been raised about entry points or, or process elements of the Global Digital Compact. Um, and maybe we'll, but just, be, just before that, just sort of last call for any co other inputs that we want to do before we start responding. Um, Thank you, Robert. Uh, I just want to uh, say something about CSUD because it was mentioned a few times. Um, our UNCTAD is uh, uh, in the end, yes, uh, responsible for our e-business together with ITU and ITC. At the same time, UNCTAD is also providing uh, sexual service and support to the CSUD, the UN Commission on Science Technology for Development, which is uh, responsible for actually our, our review of the WISIS follow-up since 2006, uh, mandated by the General Assembly uh, through ECOSOCO. And so Dennis is correct that uh, uh, in preparing the annual review, uh, we seek inputs from uh, Angus uh, members. Uh, uh, of course, in addition to Angus members, we also seek inputs from uh, other stakeholders like NGOs, civil society, and uh, technical communities. And so uh, definitely uh, we aim to, um, <laughs> to be um, coordinated with, uh, uh, with the Angus uh, members in preparing the annual review. And also in the WISP Plus 20 review, we are also joining forces uh, with, uh, with the Angus members. Um, Dennis mentioned the deadline of October, and that is uh, uh, the deadline for providing inputs to the annual review of the uh, SG, the UNSG, uh, for a uh, review uh, that will be done in April next year. But uh, we have extended actually the deadline. So anyway, I mean, uh, we welcome inputs, uh, uh, <laughs> even coming at the last minute before we submit our paper to New York for policy clearance. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, making this interactive. Uh, I'm very encouraged by what when UNESCO says that uh, 
what we have talked about in the previous session on the question of what is the larger vision that you are picking this up. That is, I think, very, very important and essential. The, my question to you would be, and also to you would be, uh, and also to ITU and the other partners is, does that not need a little bit of a different process than what we have now? Or how would you see that the process now of asking, let's say, uh, pointed, possibly fragmented input, you know, can actually lead to that? Because m my sense of it is, and that was uh, the experience of 2003 and 2005, there was a lot of preparatory work going on. And I remember Adama Samaseko, how he was uh, coaching that, and then Yanis Kaklins, how he was coaching it. And there was a lot of interactive consultation and a boiling down. I say this specifically regarding what is so important for the World Summit Award, which is the whole question of local content and local impact and things like this. That was something which we worked on. It was not something given, you know, to have this. And if we look at now from UNESCO's side, you know, the entire decade of indigenous languages plays exactly into this kind of role, you know. That is something where this really plays an important aspect. So my question is, what would be, on your side, thinking in terms of what we need to add or, let's say, possibly, I mean, consider uh, for this uh, as a visionary process? I talked to Vin Cerf about this as well, and he said that one, the leadership panel will have some things to say, but the leadership panel is much more limited than what we are talking here in terms of the business process. So thank you very much, Juan Putin. Thanks for the question. Let's let that simmer for a second before, Pratik, I go to you or, or Gitanjali. Um, and, and obviously this also has to do, we've had some process questions, Quentin, about the GDC and things like that as well. So maybe you could speak a little bit to some of those that have come up. Sure, thanks, Rob. Hi, everyone. My name is Quentin from the Tech Envoys office. And uh, this is my first IGF. Uh, um, I feel like I've joined a party far too late after, uh, <laughs> um, you know, 18 years after the, the thing was born. But actually, it's also the first time I'm getting deep into the WISIS issue. And I think it's a testament to the value of Quora like IGF, where we can actually bring together stakeholders and, and exchange on these issues. Um, maybe I'll structure my comments around how the Secretary General has picked this up, uh, taking it forward, some of the timelines involved and some of the content related between the GDC process and the WISIS action lines. Um, so from 2019, uh, as this kind of digital topic started coming, uh, trending a lot more, uh, the SG decided he wanted to have a much more concerted high-level political engagement, keeping the multi-stakeholder character. Um, and through the you know, roadmap on digital transformation set in train this kind of series of events which is now coming towards the summit of the future and the global digital compact. Um, in terms of timelines, uh, you know, yes, uh, the new co-facilitators or one has been reappointed and there's a, a new uh, co-facilitator for the GDC from uh, Zambia, Mr. Chola Milambo. Um, who would be shepherding the GDC process. Um, I should say, before I say anything else, anything more, that all of this is, you know, um, subject to member state decision. We are the secretariat for the process. We are not uh, actually uh, deciding anything on it. So we can speculate like you, but we expect that negotiations would probably start in January and continue through, you know, the Q1 and possibly Q2. Um, and that there has been a GA decision to, if uh, GDC is intergovernmentally agreed, to annex it to the Pact of the, Fu Pact of the Future in September. So that would be a leader-level commitment to, um, you know, a Pact of the Future with a GDC annexed to it. So what is inside of that GDC would carry that kind of high-level political weight that the SG had envisioned uh, at the beginning. So what might be inside of this um, Pact and how might that relate to the CTSD, uh, you know, process in July, the WISIS process, uh, you know, review process, and the decision the following year in 2025? Well, again, I can speculate, but um, I've heard a couple of comments 
in sessions here around the ambition around this topic. And from the Secretary General's perspective, uh, at least going by his policy brief, he has really tried to lift up the ambition on this topic. And you can see that in his policy brief, which covers eight different areas, plus the cross-cutting themes of gender and sustainability, which when we look at them in comparison to the WISIS action lines, may contain quite a lot of overlap. Um, but they are framed in a slightly, can I say, uh, more contemporary kind of nomenclature. So for example, there's a specific area just on data protection and empowerment, um, and calling for international principles on data governance, which perhaps 20 years ago weren't as front of mind or as, um, you know, people may not have realized the economic value of data and the consequences of that value being monetized in the ways that they ended up being monetized. So there are certain new principles, objectives, and actions. And um, some of those principles, objectives, and actions, of course, the UN system was consulted, I understand, uh, in the compilation of the policy brief. So it actually embeds quite a lot of UN system energy and direction in those proposals. So to the extent that those proposals end up in this annex to the Pact of the Future called a GDC, they would carry you know, intergovernmental blessing to move forward um, and provide a way for the system to kind of defragment its efforts with a high ambition level on contemporary themes. Um, final point on fora, because um, you know, there was, I think, a lot of confusion around how there was one proposal in the policy brief around review and follow-up to such commitments, actions, objectives. And, um, you know, Denise mentioned the mandate renewal for IGF and WISIS in 2025, coming a year after the GDC. What does that mean for the IGF and WISIS? So, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball like, any, uh, like anyone else, but... Um, from the Secretary General's perspective, and the Tech Envoy said this in the session on the uh, um, uh, IGF a couple of days ago, um, the Secretary General sees the IGF as crucial and has been an incredible uh, governance arrangement, allowing an internet to grow from you know, a place where it had only a couple 20 million users back in the 90s to now billions of users. Um, kept the technical architecture going with the technical community uh, able to exchange with each other in spite of everything else that's going on in the world that has continued humming very effectively and that that needs to be protected and continued. So the vision for a review and follow-up mechanism on the GDC is not to displace an IGF. In fact, it's actually to uh, say to, to prevent issues that could interfere with the core value of the IGF, keeping the internet running well, uh, from polluting the well, if we could put, uh, put it that way. Um, so a review and follow-up mechanism to defragment the UN system's actions around that. On WISIS plus 25, that's where, to be honest, I'm actually also a little bit unclear exactly how the WISIS action lines are reviewed and followed up on, but it could be um, a way of updating the WISIS to kind of correspond with some of these more contemporary themes and have the high-level political buy-in where, where helpful. So, um, understand the point on bandwidth, on how much um, confusion and effort there is to follow all of these processes. Um, I guess next January, next spring, will be the time when the member states decide to you know, start negotiating and where we've had a lot of the questions around how multi-stakeholder inputs will go in, that will be the kind of time where this uh, really starts getting clearer. And um, hopefully through this process that will actually help the UN system come together behind an updated ambitious uh, vision for digital cooperation in the future. Thanks. Thanks, Quentin, and acknowledging that um, you're the steward of this process, not the driver, because it's the member states. So thanks for tackling those questions. Um, we just have a couple minutes left. Katanji, I'm going to turn to you first, and then I'm going to try to sum up some of the issues we've heard. Uh, thank you, Rob, and thank you all for being here today. Um, as we heard, you know, um, this is a multi-stakeholder process, which is very well established. And we must have a distinction between two things here. One thing is the framework, 
and we have a beautiful framework of the visis action lines where different un agencies and congratulations to you sir and the visionaries at that time who actually put together this framework nada masama saku yanes kaklings and the others uh, because the framework is uh, brilliant it covers all the important topics the action lines the partnership on measurements the uh, un digital cooperation and everything in it multi stakeholderism being at the heart of it uh, the second topic is the content so obviously at that time social networks did not exist exist but it talks about cyber security talks about ict infrastructure talks about so these are two different things you know one is the framework and which is like really a solid framework second one is the content which has evolved over the years and we did do an update of the action lines in uh, 2014 Uh, when we were looking at the visis plus 10 process that was a brilliant uh, you some of you were involved in it we updated them and we uh, of course unesco did something in 2013 the connecting the dots uh, itu and all other agencies member states uh, uh, civil society participated in this big multi stakeholder preparatory pro process where we updated the action lines and identified the gaps so this has been done one of the things that um, scap and eca touched upon was the targets targets are really crucial uh, you know we had targets at that time of connecting the schools uh, you know connecting libraries connecting post offices paul if you remember but the targets have not been updated so uh, this is something we should uh, really look at um and uh, ma'am you spoke about uh, involving the youth uh, we are trying however this is an uh, open process so your voice is really important please give us these kind of ideas uh, we will have a youth day on uh, the 31st of may at the end of the visis forum uh, we involve the academia on, in that university of geneva is doing a hackathon with us uh, we'll have hands on training for the youth on uh, online security and all of that so if you have some ideas we would love to work with you uh, on those as well we are on instagram visis process <laughs> not unjis but visis process says is on instagram and uh, of course rob so now i hand over because we don't have time yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me we're a little bit after time so let me just kind of see what we've got on our list of to do's um, and takeaways but thank i want to thank all of you for the the excellent discussion and the ideas put forward what i've heard gitanjali is um there is appetite for uh, at a call for a joint position of ungus in some of this uh process Uh, and I think that's a very good idea um, to consolidate our view and our vision as UN players to inform member states as they go forward. Um, uh, related to that, there was a call that perhaps Angus can be helpful to cascade or elaborate that process for stakeholders to participate in these processes, like Global Digital Compact and WISIS, etc. And so I think we need to reflect on what we might do around that. um there was a call to include all un agencies um we already have 32 um i think there's there's so there's two issues one is getting the participation of all the ones who've already signed up and then the other is um extending that beyond and there's only about 40 odd un entities i mean only <laughs> there are 40 odd un entities um but we can look to see who we don't have included and um make sure that they are um There was a suggestion of an internal work plan for Angus. I think that's a good one as well. Uh and the marketing strategy which you already spoke to and I think that's a broader issue of how do we actually ensure that we're meeting youth and other parts of populations where they are. Um and then a suggestion that maybe Angus can help uh, bridge some of these different spheres of the UN so that's I think also in the the, the joint positioning. Uh there were a couple questions raised about wisis to put on the table like the action lines what's the future of those action lines and again that may be part of the ungus position here um and then measurement how do we um you know what what are we going to do about measurement um are we going to tackle that what's the un position around that um then just finally i would say i haven't really spoken about undp's work and i'm not going to to do that um but uh there are several i think very positive developments in the system but just kind of in general that i think speak to the convergence and need for convergence between agencies but also between stakeholders um one of them uh, pratik you mentioned the joint uh, sdg digital window so this is um 
The joint SDG fund is a fund set up to support multiple UN agencies to work together at the country level um, by releasing and allocating resources through a, a, a competitive process. And the European Union has put $30 million into a digital window. Um, the digital window, by nature, focuses on integrated responses. So it's really, it has to be done with more than one agency, and it has to focus on cross-cutting issues. And this is the um, whole kind of evolution of digital in some ways. And maybe this was seen by some of the visionaries 20 years ago, but maybe the rest of the world is now kind of catching up and realizing um, if you are going to work on sectoral approaches, we were talking about this before with my FAO colleague, you know, you can work only so far on agriculture or health or education or social protection before you start to converge on these kind of common layers around whether it's digital capacity building, the new discussion on digital public infrastructure, or the over, overall trend around sustainability and the concern about sustainability. So there are more and more of these kind of common issues that are emerging in the digital space. And that, I think, speaks to the importance of the UNGAS platform and the need to do these things that we've talked about today. Um, so with that, and being a few minutes over time, I apologize, um, I want to thank you again for your participation and we'll look forward to the, the next touch point. Um, if I can be shameless and promote uh, something, there's an event happening at 3.30 um, that, uh, that I'm chairing that one as well, and it's on um, AI is coming, are countries ready or not? Um, and that is next door in the workshop eight uh, room, so please feel free to join us if you're available and interested. Uh, we're gonna be talking about countries' AI readiness. So with that, thank you very much.